One of the joys of having a little workshop is that people bring in things to be repaired. Now, repair work's not always the most fun thing to do, but it has a wonderful side effect in that you actually get to handle pieces of furniture you might not otherwise see. This is the case today. A fellow brought in a chair that, well, as you can see, it needs a new seat. We're not going to worry about that today. I actually want to tell you something about this chair because it's, it's really a neat chair. But to begin our time, I want to refer back a little bit. Short time ago, we had a tale of two chairs. And this was one of the chairs in that uh, video. It's a little arrow back Windsor chair, probably from the second quarter of the 19th century. Handmade by my good buddy Richard Dixon. Solid piece of country workmanship. Now, it, it's called a Windsor chair because of how it's structured. It has a big heavy plank seat, and the backs fasten into the seat, the legs fasten in from the bottom. That constitutes a Windsor chair. Solid wood seat. And the seat holds the chair together. Now this is good country workmanship. This chair, well you can see it belongs to a different world. But it's interesting that this chair is in fact probably a contemporary of this chair. This is a, a different structure. It belongs to a different part of life. This is a kitchen chair. This is a farmer's chair. Um, country people sat on these chairs. This is a dining chair. Now, I want to show you a little bit about it. I'll just set this one aside. First thing is I want to show you that this is not a Windsor chair. There's no solid seat. As a matter of fact, that's the problem. There's no seat. This chair is framed together. It's a framework. Legs, back stands, cross pieces of the seat. That's what holds it together. The chair is framed with joints and the seat is added to the chair. Now this style is called Regency. It's a style that, that became popular in the first quarter of the 19th century when people were fascinated with everything Greek. If you look at the back stand, see these curves? Those were copied from Greek reliefs and, and paintings. When these chairs were first built, the front legs were a mirror image of the back. They would curve, sort of a saber leg, Clismo style. Then later on in England, probably in the 1830s, I, I'm not an expert on this, the front legs were turned. You can see the elements of the turning. Now, what excites me about this chair is that although many, many of these chairs have been made all throughout the 19th century, and, and basically they're still made today, it's just a popular style. This one is early enough to be basically a handmade chair. Mahogany, but handmade. Now, I want to show you a couple of things that, uh, that give that away, as it were. Now, the easiest way to look first is to flip the chair over. Now, if you look here, see this is cut to a curve. Because everything is high style and curves. Oh my, look at that. That's been chopped out, roughed out with a plane or a spoke shave, and left just that way. On the front, big heavy piece of mahogany, chip out. It's, it's kind of like a ribbon stripe wood. And it chipped when it was planed, with a hand plane. No attempt to smooth that out. You'll find that in the age of handwork, hidden parts didn't get a lot of finish. It was extra work that nobody was paying for. You know, the, the men who made these chairs were likely paid by the piece. 
they had to work quickly, so nothing was wasted on what didn't need to be cleaned up. As a matter of fact, there's not even any indication that these underneath pieces were ever stained or finished at all. All the finish is where it counts, where you see it. So you can, you can see if you flip a chair over, you look for those telltale signs. And you can see if, the, if maybe it was done by hand or by machine. Because as I said, these chairs were made for a long time. This is an original from, from the period, the, probably the second quarter of the 19th century. Where it was made, I don't know. It could have been made anywhere, but likely in a city. A city workshop or some workshop that served country uh, upscale clientele. Now I want to show you a few other things that indicate the handwork on this chair. First, when you look at a chair like this, there's a critical joint. The critical joint is where the seat rail meets the back stand. This is where the chair suffers all its tensions and, and, and pressures. Think of someone sitting and leaning back, of someone tipping back in a chair. Of course, you didn't do that with dining chairs, but you did with Windsor's, mm -hmm. with the kitchen chairs. But all the stress is here. Now, in handwork, it was very common in the period, not so common in factory work, but very common, to run a mortise and tenon joint and run the tenon all the way through from the side, all the way through the back stand. To give you the maximum strength for that joint, it would have been assembled, glued, and wedged, little wooden wedges that would spread the tenon out and grip the mortise. That's, that's a way of, of doing things that, that comes from joinery. It was used in carpentry, cabinet making, virtually all kinds of woodworking. That's the strength of the chair. That kind of thing disappeared in the factories. Because in the factories, well, they're in a hurry. And that's one of the things that... The differences between handwork and, and machine work. Now, the truth is, if you want to make things by machine, you can make them into exceptionally high qualities. Much faster and easier than by hand. The trouble with the machine is... We try to keep up to the machine. And to keep up to the machine, we cut corners. We find quicker, easier, more streamlined ways of doing things. Nothing wrong with them. They keep the cost down, but mm, they may take the longevity out of the chair. Now I just want to show you just a couple of more things. I don't know if I can get the light just right. This, if you see it, if I can get the reflection just right, you can see that this has a little bit of waviness to it. You run your hand across, you can feel it. It's a piece of wood that was bent, scraped, but it's not absolutely uniform, not the way you'd, you'd have it in a factory. Same thing with the, this intermediate piece. You can actually feel slight differences in thickness. That comes from doing it by hand. These people had to work very quickly. Now, another thing that in handwork you'll see is these back stands come up, the front edge is rounded, but when they get to the back splat, they have to adjust the curve. It comes down and it just has to be fared into this curve. You can, it's hard to see, but actually it changes its angle just to blend in together. Same kind of techniques on the front. This was turned, the leg, out of a square piece of wood, about two inches square. But this corner is not square. So what happens is that it's framed in. There's a square corner here, but when the front is framed into it, this corner would be high. So it's all put together, take a plane, plane down this high corner to get it very close, 
fair it off a bit and all of a sudden it feels almost like it's rounded but it's not quite it actually comes across flat and then it goes back to the square of the original corner just a piece of work on each side I just want to show you a couple of those things that there's a telltale marks of, of handwork of so again probably from I don't know the 1840s maybe maybe as late as 1840 I don't know the reason I say that has to do with this style of the turnings some of the earlier turnings when when turned legs became popular on these chairs are quite slender sort of a Sheraton style these are becoming a little heavier a little more bulbous rings and a vase turning it's getting into a style of turning that becomes ubiquitous in the 19th century and in fact continues today the most popular style of turning that you can probably find anywhere if you compare this and I'm saying this is maybe 1840 maybe a little earlier I'm no expert on that but compare it to this table a country made table and you can just see that the elements of the turning are very similar it's a style of turning that was put to all kinds of use it just became so popular and as a matter of fact here's a table leg from a table made in the 1870s out in a country workshop you can see that the elements of the turning although they're becoming more curvaceous the earlier ones are straighter are all there rings vase and today you can go into any furniture store that sells country style furniture they'll have the same thing but they won't look the same just as handwork shows in joinery handwork shows in turning as well but that's that's something we'll talk about again now I just want to share those few things I've got to take this seat out and repair it because you know life goes on so the next time you get a chair in your shop look it over try to figure out how it went together who put it together and you'll learn a lot and we'll see you next time bye